What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be covering automatic weapons and firing uh, when pressing the button down to fire, meaning you don't have to press every single time. So even with a weapon like the pistol, and this is what I'm calling the pistol, it's what I classified it as, but really it's just a base uh, Unreal weapon, then I can still hold the input down to fire and it will keep firing. If we have a different weapon, like the Kingslayer, then you can see I can increase the fire rate and it will shoot faster and faster. And then if we have the submachine gun, you can see I can shoot quite fast. And it should probably even be faster than this, but I'm just giving you um, an example of what this should look like. So we're gonna be going over fire rates and being able to hold down a button to continuously fire using the Unreal Engine first person shooter tutorial. Now we are a little bit into this series not too far, but I think this is like episode 11. So if you'd like to catch up on everything we've done in the first person shooter tutorial series so far, I'll leave a link in this icon in the top right corner to the very first episode of it. Otherwise, uh, you will be able to do the majority of this tutorial without watching the other videos if you'd like. The main issue that can pop up is in the on fire function because I'm gonna make quite a few changes to it. So just try and be careful with that. We're gonna start with the code today. So in the code, uh, we're gonna have to add two functions and we're also going to add a variable called fire rate. So if I scroll down my variable list, I have a few things. I've got an F timer handle for fire timer handle. Now, if you guys were familiar with this series or familiar with handles, you'll know that these handles are used to basically uh, capture the result of a timer and kind of figure out what the timer is currently doing. So you can spawn a timer in the world and give it this this timer handle. And then you can do things like clean up and stop the timer or restart the timer using this timer handle. So this is just good. We're going to use basic uh, Unreal timers to determine our automatic firing. So go ahead and make one of these guys. Make sure you add Two new functions. I added them right under on fire. So on fire was being triggered when we were pressing click, left mouse click. That's what our shoot button was. And that was good. That works. But if we want to do automatic, we kind of want to determine when we want to trigger this function. And we don't want to just do it on click. So instead, I have a new function called start firing and a function called stop firing. And these are going to help determine. Uh, what we should use to see if on fire should go through all of its logic. Make these two functions. Okay, then go ahead and add a boolean somewhere. You can say I put it with my other booleans, and I call it is shooting. This determines if the player is currently trying to shoot the gun. Doesn't necessarily mean that bullets are coming out or anything like that, but we're essentially going to set this boolean to be true um, when start firing triggers and said to be false when stop firing trigger. So this is going to determine if we're holding or if we've released the fire key. That's how we know if is shooting is true. And then lastly, in our weapon itself, in my base weapon.h class, I go ahead and set up a fire rate uh, variable, which I've made it a float and of course edit anywhere blueprint read write. That way we can set it specifically in all of the weapon classes and all the weapon blueprints in Unreal to make our lives a lot easier. So if we go back into our, well first let's set our fire rate to be something by default in our constructor, in our base weapon CPP. So like with all our other variables, we have to set a default and I'm gonna go ahead and set it to 0 0.25 float. So it's not a huge deal what you make it. Obviously the smaller, or the, yeah, the smaller it is, the faster it will be, and the larger it is, the slower it will be. It's essentially, if it's slower, so say it's 1.0, it's gonna essentially take about one second between fires. Okay, now let's go into our base character and also set the is shooting boolean to be false. Just like that, since I forgot to do it. <laughs> And we're good to go there. Just make sure you set that as a default. Okay. Now, 
this is where we left off last time. We had this on fire function, and this on fire function was doing all this basic stuff that spawns a projectile and shoots it out into the world. And this was being done by the Unreal template, so we didn't do all this. But all of this logic you see here is done by the template. So we have added quite a few things. Um, this stuff is also done by the template. So let's try and make this as not confusing as possible. And the way we're going to do that is I'm just going to kind of go over the entire thing um, again instead of trying to figure out what we inserted and what we didn't insert. I think it's just easier to kind of go over it as a whole. So we're going to do an if check to determine if is shooting before we do anything in this on fire function. Basically, is the player pressing the fire button or have they released the fire button? If they release the fire button, but we get a call to on fire, we don't want to fire. There's no reason to do that. The player has already released the key. And remember, we're just trying to make it so that it'll fire if we continue to hold the button down. So it's like an automatic weapon as opposed to an individual shot weapon. Okay. And so with that, we do our regular checks that were in the template and we check if projectile class is not equal to null because we have to make sure we have something to shoot. Then it gets the world. Well, if, if this isn't valid, then you're going to have a lot of issues down the line. So don't worry about this too much. This is just an unreal safety check. Make sure it is valid. And then we do some more logic of our own. So the way we're switching through our weapons is using a weapon index. And I've covered that in this episode right here, if you'd like to go over weapon indices and switching between weapons and the ammo they use. So what we want to do now is check if weapons dot is valid index weapon index. So weapons is our array of weapons. So if we have like two weapons on hand, then they're both going to be in there. And we want to check if the index is valid. The reason we're checking if the index is valid is because you can grab a weapon and it might not be a valid index. We might be trying to use weapons index three, but we only have two weapons. So we have to be careful and make sure that before we do anything with weapons, we're using the proper value. Now we did set this up in the last episode, just as weapons bracket weapon index, but that's not really a good way to do it. That will check if the weapon inside of that uh, weapons array at that index is valid, but we actually want to make sure we don't go out of bounds in the array too. So an easy way to do it is to just do it like this. Then we make sure we have ammo in our clip. So once we've checked that this is valid, we can do weapons, weapon index, get the ammo in our clip and make sure it's above zero. If it is, then we can fire, else we got to reload. And then again, this is template stuff. This is determining if we're using motion controllers or not and where to shoot the bullet from. But at the end, regardless if we're using controllers or not, I want to call on fire again with the weapons fire rate and then subtract the ammo from the weapons clip. So this is the important part of today's episode. Basically, what we're trying to do here is we're going to, okay, we've made it to a part where we can fire a bullet. And at that point, we want to trigger the next fire action. So we want to trigger the game to be ready to fire again. So the easiest way to do that is to call the function again within the function. And we'll have this is shooting boolean here to break the loop when we release the button. So it won't be an infinite loop. All you do to set a timer is you get world, which we technically have this world uh, variable up here. So really, here's what we should do, but you don't have to. So you get your world, you get your timer manager, which is just part of the world, you don't have to set it up or anything, dot set timer. And this is how you trigger a timer. Now the way it works is it takes in a timer handle. And that's what again, you can uh, restart timers with clear out timers, it's your basically your reference to the thing controlling the timer. So you put in a timer that you made, we made the F timer handle uh, fire timer handle right here. That's why we made this. So put that handle in right here. This is fine for the next argument. On fire is the function you're going to call. This is the rate at which uh, you have to call the function. So essentially it's when how much of a delay from this point 
it'll take until you call the function. So if the fire rate is 0.25, then in 0.25 seconds, it's gonna call this function again. If it's five, then in five seconds, it's gonna call this function again. And then you can say false for this last argument. Okay, so there you go. And this will work for no matter what uh, weapon you have, as long as you have a fire rate set up for all of them, they'll have different fire rates then this will work because we're not doing it for a specific amount of time or a specific fire rate. So we can change it on the spot and get the changes we want. Now, the only thing we have to do is make sure that is shooting is accurate before uh, shooting again. Otherwise you'd keep shooting even when you release the click or the key or the button and we don't want that. So the rest of the stuff was from the template so I won't be covering this, but this is how they do the sound effects and the animation. So the other two things we have to cover are the start firing and stop firing functions. So go ahead and set them up now. We already made them in the header file. But they're very simple functions. So start firing is gonna set is shooting to be true. Remember it's false by default. So once we click the button, the mouse in this case, then is shooting becomes true. We want to be shooting, fine. And then we call on fire, which is this function we just set up. So we're saying yes, we're good to shoot, start firing. Then in stop firing, we set issuing to be false, so we are no longer good to go into on fire. Which means, if this timer is set up to call itself again, but this returns false, you're gonna skip the entire function and just exit the function. It won't go ahead and call this again, so you won't get stuck in an infinite loop, and then you'll automatically get kicked out. And then, I'd like to do this. This is just a clean way to invalidate timers, um, to clean them up, essentially. It says in the comment, explicitly clear handle. Uh, basically, it's just a safety check to kind of clear it out and make sure there's nothing stuck in there. That way, when you go to use it again, it still works and it's not relying on old data. So you can just grab your timer handle, dot invalidate like that. Okay, and now we are good with the code. So if we go into the blueprint, there's not much to do, but we do need to make sure that we can change uh, the values for each weapon. So. I should say, make sure you build, build solution, and then compile and unreal once that succeeds. Then you can go into all your weapons you have. So I have my uh, base weapon, BP, which is a child of my base weapon class, which so that means it will have the fire rate variable we added. And then my assault rifle BP happens to be a uh, child of my base weapon BP, which remember is a child of base weapon as we just went over. So it will have the fire rate variable and same with submachine gun. I'm just showing you. So that's how this works. Base weapon BP. So they all have the fire rate. Um, just click on class defaults and you'll be able to see all your variables. Then you change the fire rate to be what you want for that weapon. For the blaster, for the pistol, or whatever we're calling it, I have a fire rate of one. So every one second, it should be able to shoot a bullet. The assault rifle has a fire rate of 0.2. So every 0.2 seconds, it should be able to shoot a bullet. And then the submachine gun uh, has a fire rate of 0.15. So every 0.15 seconds, it should be able to shoot a bullet. And we can test it out and see if that's pretty accurate. So let's test with the blaster. It says about one a second. Let's go grab the Kingslayer. And I mean, that seems like five a second or so. And then let's grab the blaster and it should shoot a little over six a second. And you should see that that should be pretty accurate as well. So there you go, guys. That's how you can change your fire rate for different weapons, make weapons automatic and allow weapons to keep shooting as you hold the button down as opposed to every time you click it. So. I hope this video helped you achieve that and next time we'll be going over probably repositioning the gun in the player's hand because at this point it's starting to look a little bit silly. He's kind of just holding it with his one hand and then having his other hand ready to be shot by the submachine gun. So we'll be covering that. But thank you guys so much for watching. If this helps you, please subscribe. It does more for the channel than anything else you can do and I just really appreciate it. It lets me know that I'm doing a good job. Um, I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon and YouTube membership supporters. Thank you guys for continuing to support me and believe in me. The support they've given have really helped me uh, continue to make episodes, 
and videos as I've gone back to work and things like that. So I really appreciate it and just thank you guys so much. You can see the rewards here if you'd like to uh, join either the Patreon or the YouTube membership. They both have the same rewards. So if you had any issues with this episode or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord. It's a community where you can join and we'll help you out with issues you had while watching the videos or just issues you have in general. We'll be happy to at least talk about them and try and figure them out. You can click the link in the description to join. And lastly, guys, if you want to come support us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash the bro 27 We're currently struggling through Demon Souls, and then we'll probably be starting something like Until Dawn of the Dark Pictures Anthology. We have to find another good game to play on Fridays. Anyway, guys, thank you so much, so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.